Hey guys, Scanner Danner here. I am working on something strange here. Uh, it's a Chevy HHR, I think it's called. It's a 2009. It has an Ecotech engine in it. Um, rebooting my scan tool here as we're talking. It's a 2.2 liter Ecotech engine. Uh, I am really upset that I didn't turn the camera on first because I think I missed a window to show you guys the extremely long crank time that this had. In fact, I thought it was a no start and uh, that the car was towed here, but not the case. This is one of the symptoms, is a really, really long crank time. And I was able to get it started by putting my foot on the gas pedal and almost kind of a clear flood mode. And then sure enough, I scan the codes and I have rich exhaust coat. So extremely long crank time, um, a P0172, which I'll show you here in a minute when my scan tool powers up. And uh, it also had a random misfire code. I did unplug the mass airflow off camera, um, just in, in light of the rich code that I had. And uh, you're, you're gonna see that we're gonna have a false mass airflow code. So just keep that in mind. What I was looking for, when I did that was I was looking for um, uh, the fuel trim numbers to get better. I have very negative fuel trim numbers. So let me show you the codes. Again, the mass airflow code I set, but I saw a data parameter that puts me exactly where I need to be on this car and I'm getting to that for you guys. Yeah, fuel system rich, the P0172. Uh, the mass airflow code ignore, intake air temp sensor ignore because that's part of the mass airflow and then engine misfire. All right, so I was looking at some data, in particular my fuel trim data. Let me show it to you, start the car. You hear the car starts okay right now. Again, I missed that window to uh, show you guys that really, really long crank time and look at our trims minus 24 percent minus 27 percent long term minus 13 all right long crank time associated with a rich code right engines flooded and I'm scrolling through some of my data and I noticed something that I didn't like and that's this guy right here top left fuel alcohol content 73% okay so at 73% um, I got on the phone called the owner asked them if they were using the flex fuel gasoline this is a flex fuel engine and they said no they do not they never use it in fact my this is a friend of mine I went to school with this is her mother's car she said she drives it once a week and and very uh, short trips which is exactly what throws off this algorithm for the alcohol content on this car. Short trips, and then when you don't fill the tank each time you use it, um, that's what aggravates the system. So we're gonna reset this fuel alcohol content. We're gonna fix these trim numbers by doing that. And uh, I wanna do a fuel sample first to make sure, and then we'll just reset it and we'll be done with this. So my next step is I'm gonna attach a fuel pressure gauge take a little fuel sample out of this and I bought a different style of uh, gauge for this so I don't have to worry about doing any math last time I did this I did it with a mason jar um, but here's here's the one I'm using I'm gonna add water to this line where my thumb is and then we add fuel to this line and then we can shake it up and then we can see how much alcohol remember alcohol and water the uh, alcohol absorbs water and so we can look at the level increase right that's the plan okay so i filled my container up to the water level and uh i had to take some gasoline out of this i just cleaned out a iced tea container so nice of GM to give us a Schrader valve so I can adapt my fuel pressure gauge right to that. Last thing you wanna do is reset the fuel alcohol content on, on a car like this, unless you're sure. So taking a fuel sample is necessary. 
and I trust my friend, but you know, it is her mom's car and it's possible that her mom got some E85 gas. I just need to make sure that that is not the case. All right, so all I'm gonna use is my, my tool here to get some gasoline out of here. And uh, we can think, we should be able to bi-directionally turn this pump on. Let's go back, active task, fuel trim reset. Fuel pump relay. I'm gonna use the scan tool to do it. Ignition switch is on. There, I'll let you guys see the pressure gauge too. Not that I need this part, but I'll let you see it anyway. And I'm gonna command the pump on. And I'm just gonna drain it into this. We'll turn that pump on again. And that should be enough. So I have um, water to this line, and then we fill gasoline to this line You see when they're separated, All right? Water's at the bottom, gasoline's on the top. Let's shake this up, then we'll let it sit. I don't know why they don't continue the scale all the way down. All right, so if this, if this had 70% uh, alcohol in it, remember the water line, what we filled the water to, see how much higher it is now. It did come up, so there is alcohol in this, but that looks more like 10%, which is what all of our gasoline has, not the 70% that is showing on the scan tool. If we had 70% alcohol in this gas, that line would be way up here. Remember that alcohol and water, the two of those are mixed together now. That's why the water line increase happened. The water is going to pull the alcohol out of the fuel you see that line I hope the camera's showing that you see the cloud difference in that can you guys see that yeah you definitely can right and you see how much higher it, it did move up from that line right there up to there but 70% is way up here I am absolutely gonna reset this that looks like 10% alcohol to me Based on this gauge, it would been nice if they would have made that scale go all the way down. But it's not critical. You see the numbers on the top part, 70, 80, 90%. Yeah, that's about 10%. Clearly a miscalculation here. Um, my battery's dying on my scan tool, so... Uh, Let's uh, do a couple things here. Let's take this off first. Take my fuel gauge off. Special functions. We're doing a fuel composition reset. See it says 73% alcohol. Totally wrong. Right down here. Reset parameters. Reset counters. Let's watch it. Back to zero. Okay. And now let's go back in the car, start it, see what our fuel trim numbers look like. I could have reset the trim numbers too. I did not want to do that because I want to show you guys the counter numbers. Okay, watch the long term, short term. Initial startup. 
This looks great. The trims aren't active yet. There we go. Look at that. Short term minus two. Long term at zero. Well, that's not good. We had a minus 16 there for a second. Let's let these balance out. I want to see some positive short-term numbers countering the memory of the long-term. That's what we should see. This is what I should have reset the fuel trim on. All right, we're going to do something different here. Fuel trim reset. Well, let me reset it with the engine running is the question. Reset. Yes, it did. Oh, it gives me live data on here, too. We still got some negative numbers but not what we had let's keep watching this I don't mind a minus seven I'm telling him to do an oil change on this thing too I think the final final piece to this to get that long term back into a better number would be do an oil change. That's certainly a lot better. I like a minus 9 over a minus 19. When I first started it before, hopefully you guys saw it, it was like minus 22 on the short term. That looks a lot better. Remember, this is still a little bit miscalculated because I'm at zero right now and we're using 10% in our systems, but that shouldn't shouldn't affect things too much this is a higher rpm number should have shown the higher rpm number before i like a minus minus one you see the positive on the short term a negative on the long term absolutely a fix idle speed a little bit rich still but nothing that's gonna really need addressed beyond an oil change I think all right so what's the fix how do we keep this from happening in the future is um, well, you can't really uh, avoid the short trips, but short trips aggravate this. But primarily is the small amounts you add to the tank. So you fill the tank a little bit and not a lot, and then you take short trips. And the way that they do the algorithm for this, um, it doesn't like it and then miscalculates the um, alcohol percentage. So I have a couple videos that I've done on this, um, and I'll, I'll make sure that they're provided in the description of this video and uh, you guys can watch those and where we kind of fought this battle before but this was a nice quick one nice and easy fuel um, composition reset is all that was really needed for this car unfortunately i wasn't able to show you guys the really long crank time but i know that that's going to be fixed too with a miscalculation of 70 percent alcohol the reason you'd have a rich condition in that environment is the computer thinks that there's 70% alcohol and it increases the pulse width to a point where we need more fuel. So alcohol, you need more of it, a larger volume to get the same amount that gasoline would give you. And so when you're operating on a 70% alcohol content, the computer opens the injector pulse width up real wide to account for that alcohol. And when that alcohol is not there and it's more gasoline, that's why you have a rich condition. That's why the engine floods when you're cranking it. That's why you have a long crank time and a check engine light on for a rich condition. So I hope you guys like that one. Uh, don't forget to go to my website, scannerdanner.com. Check out the field manual that I've written. I also have my college course recorded where I recorded all of my classroom lectures from Rosedale Technical College, uh, where I'm teaching page for page through my, through my book. Uh, it's called Scanner Danner Premium. There's a 14 day free trial and uh, it's $11 a month after that. You can't find what I'm offering anywhere. Um, 
certainly it's not the be all end all but it's foundational information uh, the idea is to take you from ground zero and build you up to a foundation where you can be part of this field and do this kind of stuff uh, one last thing would be to mention my tools page you know where do you get stuff like this i have this listed on my amazon page um, and if you don't find it there you'll find it on the tools page on my website so tools page on my website and then amazon where are these links uh, pretty self-explanatory with my website scannerdanner.com click on the tools tab and then as far as my amazon affiliate page where you'll find oh, this thing go to youtube on my channel page there's an icon for amazon in the channel art at the top right of the screen also i'm linking them in all of my videos now on youtube so in this upload look in the description you will find a link for my amazon page where you can find stuff like this so i think that's it guys hope to see you on scanner dan or premium ask around you'll find there's not really anyone who's given me negative reviews <laughs> go to the uh, feedback page on my website you can read a lot of the reviews there too and if you're on the fence about it Feel free to contact me at support at scannerdanner.com. We can talk about it. And uh, I hope to see you there. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you next time.